Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company. I'm Pete Gruber, and today we're going to cover the auto shop of the future. As one of, if not the only, first large independent successful commercial Tesla service center, we've become highly visible and requests for franchising, training, sharing our processes occurs daily from various countries. Tesla, you see, is not yet ready to outsource service or share software or hardware tools, except for the Roadster, which they surprisingly released service manuals for last month. So these newcomers that want to start an EV service organization see us as a ticket into this new type of auto service. Car manufacturers, or for that matter, any manufacturer, would like to dominate service for the stuff they build. Most learn to structure service delivery as a profit center, which of course feeds the bottom line. Some unscrupulous manufacturers go to great lengths to lock out competition. They do so by adding proprietary elements to their products, adding custom firmware to lock out competition, and then prosecuting anyone replicating or using bootleg versions of this proprietary lockout software. The traditional auto manufacturers that have been around for decades, and EV production is currently a small sideline, service their tiny EV install base through their traditional dealer service channels, who really struggle with a radically different set of service needs for EVs. The only car manufacturer currently with a large EV service delivery network is Tesla, having the largest installed EV base on the planet. The problem that any new EV manufacturer will have trying to monetize service delivery is lack of a mature product line. For the first few years after a product release, there will simply not be enough vehicles out of warranty for revenue generating to make service delivery profitable. If the vast majority of service work being done is non-income generating warranty work, with limited income generating activity, Service will become, for most EV manufacturers, an unprofitable necessity, distracting them from what they would really prefer to do, which is sell more vehicles. Independent shops like ours specializing in Tesla vehicles saw slim pickings until cars moved out of the warranty period. To stay busy and viable, we operated in niche markets like buying salvage flood damage cars and selling them. To a smaller extent, Overloaded service centers creating service delays motivated a few owners to seek out independent shops, but certainly not enough to sustain them. Our never-ending search for profitability also included a focus on the first-generation Tesla, the Roadster, released in 2008 and mostly out of warranty when we got started in 2014. Other sources of revenue was repairing Tesla vehicles that service centers would not touch, like collision damaged, totaled salvage titled cars. There are two factors now making independent Tesla shops more viable and showing a clear path to revenue. One, the list of Tesla vehicles moving outside the warranty window is growing daily. Two, although it hasn't happened yet with Tesla, creation of service delivery will start to lag as production capacity overwhelms service. Producing and selling product is what pays the bills. Just look at the amount of Tesla square footage under construction currently, and outsourcing service and certifying independence begins to look like a necessary natural progression to alleviate coming service center bottlenecks. There are also barriers to entry. Since EV car manufacturers do not freely share software tools and service manuals, gaining expertise is often lengthy and expensive. Reverse engineering, for example, very much like what we did with the Tesla Roadster, developing our own schematics, software, service procedures, because everything had to be created from scratch. Ex-Tesla service center employees with a pioneering spirit are often well positioned to either start independent maintenance operations or become principals in third party efforts like ours. Some of these talented service people are already starting as freelancers and those with entrepreneurial inclinations and a business sense will eventually be scaling their operations. Repairs on this new type of high-tech vehicle 
are very software intensive. Most independents do not have the resources to invest in the research and development time to develop their own software tools, really limiting what they can and cannot repair. On the Tesla vehicles, for example, changing even simple assemblies often requires a firmware redeploy. Despite Tesla vehicles moving outside of warranty window, there is still insufficient business volume to fund a fully operational independent service organization with bricks and mortar and the many layers of overhead that is necessary to sustain a full service delivery. Vehicle service activity is regional and service centers need to be near the client, which requires scaling to include replicating service capability locally. Creating all the proper infrastructure necessary for a service center is very expensive and makes return on investment even more elusive for independents. Despite the barriers to entry, independent maintenance actually has some advantages. Aftermarket activity, for example, often improves on both service delivery and sometimes even product. Traditional auto transmission shops, for example, are a prime example of a better plan from independence. Car manufacturers will sell you a new transmission, but will not tear down and repair their product. Independents are often willing to repair rather than replace expensive assemblies. This Tesla Model S battery pack is a prime example. At this point, at least, Tesla's solution is an entire replacement for around $20,000 aftermarket like us is able to go inside and repair these battery packs for substantially less. Independent service efforts and aftermarket products often resolve manufacturer design flaws. In the case of Tesla, for example, this includes a more reliable window regulator or in the Model S, a presenting door handle. And most recently, the media control unit known as the MCU, which sits behind the 17 inch screen in a Tesla Model S has an undersized flash chip, which caused thousands of screens to go dark. We helped pioneer a replacement from the eight gig chip to a 64 gig solution, which Tesla now adopted as a recall. Tesla service centers are often overwhelmed with warranty work, especially after a new vehicle platform launch. They are deluged with support questions which erodes their ability to service their routine maintenance customers. Independents, on the other hand, do not see these spikes in business and are able to provide a steady, more predictable level of customer service. In conclusion, Tesla is improving. Last month, by a surprise move, they released the first generation Roadster service manuals. Last year, they began selling all but some restricted high voltage parts to independent service organizations the support trend is definitely moving in the right direction. The level of disruption in transportation is creating many new opportunities. We will continue to share our experiences in the independent maintenance field and continue to lobby and encourage Tesla to develop strategic alliances and explore the synergies available to them by supporting independent service efforts. As always, thank you for watching our videos. We enjoy it when you come inside the auto shop of the future. Join us and uh, as always, leave your comments down below as to what you'd like to see more of or less of. Again, thank you for visiting us.